Welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Today is Monday the 18th of September and uh, we're kicking off the webinar properly in just one minute's time. As always, we'll be going through the risk warnings and the, and the, and the slides here in front of us to keep our compliance department happy. And before, before we actually go through the webinar itself, we'll just run through the risk warnings which I leave here on the screen for you to read. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, it essentially says anything that is said in this webinar should not be construed as explicit in investment advice. It is just merely commentary uh, and, and discussing possibilities what may or may not happen in the various different financial products that we look at over the next few days. So I'll just leave the risk warnings on the screen in front of you to have a read through in your own time. Uh, it really shouldn't take that long at all. It's very, uh, very short and to the point and concise. Um, it just basically says uh, this will keep our compliance department happy. Uh, once we are through with the risk warnings, we will go through the usual process whereby I talk about what has gone on in the financial markets since the London close on, on Friday. Uh, and also take a quick look at the week ahead. And then we'll have, we'll have a look at the major mar we'll have major and most popular markets. Um, all that, that, that are popular with our clients and talk about what is going on and what we potentially could see in some of, some of those markets. And then as always, if there are any markets that I haven't covered and you want me to mention, to, you want me to go through it, feel free to just stick that in the chat box and I'll happily have a look at those markets. So now that we've gotten the uh, slides out of the way, we can now focus on the actual webinar itself. So, First off, the first thing we noticed this morning uh, is, that, or that is that equity markets are higher. Um, the, the FTSE and also continent of Europe are, are, are doing all right. They're in, they're in positive territory. Uh, they had a bit of a sluggish end to last week and Wednesday onwards. Particularly, we saw the FTSE had a major sell-off uh, on, on Friday on account of the very, very strong pound. Uh, I remember that the Bank of England added to the previous hawkish commentary we've heard on, from the Bank of England on Thursday. And it was very, it was uh, kind of caught traders by surprise how, how hawkish he was. And we saw a surge in the pound, and conversely, we saw a large sell off in the FTSE 100. But we also saw um, some, we saw a kind of a, a fairly um, weak finish uh, to the continental and the Eurozone equity markets at the back end of last week as well. This week, effectively, uh, we've, we've seen kind of risk attitude pick up, uh, we've seen money. Go into equities and and come out of the kind of classic safe havens such as gold, for example. Uh, basically, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of you know major macroeconomic or political news in the in the last few days. But essentially, what that is is a lack of negative and new negative news is seen as a positive. Uh, that's what that's what we are looking at here. The situation regarding North Korea, unfortunately, is still still ongoing. Uh, but it does appear that uh, that the traders and investors are getting used to the kind of almost the, the background noise of the rumblings out of Pyongyang. And seeing as we haven't had a continuation of a ratcheting up in tensions, which we saw there for a number of weeks in a row, traders are now viewing that as a sign to actually take on more risk. And that's precisely why we're seeing equity markets uh, doing quite well this morning. Uh, and conversely, gold uh, has lost uh, about, about 10 or 15 bucks over the weekend. But it's not a major moving goal, but it's just the classic money flowing out of the typical textbook safe haven assets and into higher risk assets. Taking a look uh, at what's on the agenda uh, for the next five trading days, taking a look at our there's, our, there's the week ahead, our weekly calendar, which is on our website uh, under the news and analysis section. Uh, scroll, if you're under the, the news and analysis section, that's where you'll find it. And, th and then from there, uh, it's, it's quite easy to find. Click on news analysis, filter by topic, and then the third one down, weekly outlook, gives you a breakdown of one of the major um, economic and also corporate events over the next few days. So taking a quick glance here, what we, what we looking ahead to tomorrow, uh, what we have in, on out tomorrow, we have FedEx have numbers out on Wednesday. We have Kingfisher uh, have, have their numbers out. Wednesday, uh, seven, uh, Wednesday evening, London time, uh, we have the, have the update from the Federal Reserve. We're not expecting any change in policy from the U.S. Central Bank, but we may hear about 
uh, when the Federal Reserve are looking to um, wind down the size of their balance sheet. Uh, there is speculation out there. We could be, we, uh, we could be, we could see the U.S. Central Bank look to, to start winding down their balance sheet as of as as early as next month. But in relation to rates, uh, you know, we're not expecting any change tomorrow, and and still, uh, the kind of the, the markets aren't still pricing in, uh, aren't, aren't overly concerned about a rate hike from the Federal Reserve in December. So any kind of any of the language that we, we may hear from the Fed could give us a clue in relation to interest rates, more importantly, uh, but also that the traders are sort of expecting to hear about the tapering, or so the winding down of the uh, Fed's balance sheet. We have an update also from the Bank of, Bank of Japan overnight on Thursday. That's obviously going to be very important for anyone trading the Nikkei or for anyone trading the, the dollar-yen. Uh, and also we, we have a number of PMIs out uh, from Germany and France and, and, and the Eurozone uh, at, at the back end of the week. So scrolling down through the corporate calendar, uh, what we can see here is tomorrow we have Bed Bath & Beyond, FedEx as I, as I mentioned, uh, Kingfisher as I mentioned as well, at half, at half your numbers out in the UK on Thursday, Capita Group on Thursday and Keir Group. Uh, Capita at first half numbers, Keir Group at full year numbers out on Thursday and uh, taking a look at Friday, uh, Smith's group have their uh, full year numbers out. So on the corporate front, it's, there's a few bits and pieces, but uh, it's obviously it's reasonably quiet on the corporate economic front. Obviously, the big one of the week is going to be the Federal Reserve. And if you're in, if you're interested in trading, obviously the the, the the anything to do any of the end crosses or the Nikkei, you'll also want to keep your eyes peeled for the Bank of Japan update overnight. Uh, turning around, and also we, we do have an update uh, from Mr. Draghi on Thursday as well. So, any kind of clues to when potentially the European Central Bank may, may look to alter their or potentially trim their bond buying scheme? That could also be uh, that that would be of a uh, of a uh, you know quite quite significant importance, seeing as we have seen a bit of a softening of the euro, particularly against the British pound uh, in, in the last couple of days. Taking a look at the uh, the FTSE 100, um, basically we had a major sell-off, uh, quite a severe sell-off on Friday, and we have bounced back from that. But but while we were what we are well below the the 200-day moving average um, on the FTSE 100, and while we be, while we remain below that key barometer, uh, it's likely that that the outlook for the market is going to be negative. Um, so taking a look here. Uh, what, what we can see here, this was Friday's move, quite a severe sell-off. What it did do, tell us on Friday was that this level in around 7,300 down to 7,288 has finally been broken to the downside. After many months of being a quite a decent uh, key, key uh, support level, it's finally broken through that level quite substantially. It traded down as low as 71.95. We have pulled back some of the ground today. Notice how... Um, negative momentum is actually is actually still on the rise, even though it's a positive day today. Uh, but we're, we are well below uh, the 200-day moving average at 73.14. And while we remain south of 73.14, it's possible we could we could see we could we could, we could see the negative outlook remain in place for the FTSE 100. Should we break north of 7,314, we could potentially see a the market target. Uh, just in around the 7,400 level where the 50-day moving average comes into play. That, that potentially could be the next level to watch out for should we retake uh, the 200-day the moving average. But as I mentioned, uh, the outlook, while we, we, while we remain south of that metric, is potentially going to be, it's going to be bearish. So downside targets, we could be looking to Friday support at 7,195. And then below that, the next big level to watch out for could be the April low of 7,088. Uh, turning our attention now to the DAX. The DAX has pushed down a bit higher today, and uh, and uh, especially we, we, we are seeing a kind of gradual kind of, kind of a creep higher, a continuation of in, in the kind of positive move that we witnessed once it kind of broke out of the downward trend here. Looking at the price, the most important indicator, we are. It is encouraging to see the DAX went down to kind of create a new multi-month high today, um, and potentially the next level to watch out for to the upside will be the will be the July high. Will be the July high of um, twelve thousand 
768. And should we take out that level, the next level to what potentially watch out for will be will be would be the twelve thousand eight hundred and forty eight region, which is one of the kind of the, the spikes higher from June. It is just worth pointing out. Uh, price is the most important indicator to, to keep an eye on. So whatever the price is doing, that's what uh, that's the traders should be looking at. Even though we are kind of edging higher here, the positive momentum is ever so slightly dipping. So just be mindful of that. Any, but any moves lower in the uh, in the in the DAX may find support at twelve thousand five hundred. This price area here, south of that, the one hundred day moving average, which acted as resistance on the way up, may act as a, a support on the way down, uh, which is twelve thousand four hundred sixty five. And then south of that, uh, the, the the low here created this day last week at twelve thousand three hundred and thirty three. These are areas we could see. Uh, potentially active support should we should we see a move lower in the Germany 30 in the DAX. The US markets are a different kettle of fish. Uh, they've just been powering ahead, um, and you know the, the the trend is your friend. The old adage is that the the trend is your friend until, until it comes to an end, and the trend is very much to the upside on the on the Dow Jones. As you can see here, the futures are pointing. Uh, even though the official cash trading in in New York has won't start for about two hours time, the official cash, the, the futures market are pointed to and yet another record high for the Dow Jones. Let's see how things pan out once once the actual cash market gets underway. But the overall trend is very much at the upside in, in the Dow Jones. In terms of kind of psychological levels, psychological numbers to watch out for as potential upside targets, uh, 22,400, 22,500 and beyond. Uh, waiting, for, you know, buying buying at the pullbacks has been has been a popular strategy by some traders for the Dow Jones uh, in recent weeks. So if we do see a move lower in the Dow Jones, we could potentially find support in around the 22,200 region or a bit lower than that than that again, 22,180, and then back down towards 20, 22,100. This is what you want to see. While the price is pushing higher, you can see a very clear and concise push higher in positive momentum. So you can be more confident that the that the the upward move is going to last. It's what you want those to confirm each other. If the market's moving higher and, and positive momentum is moving higher, that that's a sign that the, the 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 buying momentum is increasing. When those two diverge, when 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 prices push higher and but but the positive momentum is declining, that's a suggestion that the positive move may come to an end. It's a similar picture uh, on the S and P 500. Uh, not quite as strong uh, as the uh, as um well, well broadly speaking it's a uh, very similar but not quite as strong as the big board itself the the dow jones but by and large it's a fairly similar view once again the, the futures market are pointing to a, 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 a fresh high once uh, once the cash market gets underway that's what we're looking at now we're still two hours out from the open uh, but once again markets point to a, a a new record all record high. Same similar situation. Next level to potentially watch out for to the upside, 2,510, 2,520. These are the kind of big psychological numbers that traders often look for, especially when you're in the kind of uh, uh, uncharted territory, as it were, uh, fresh record highs. Moves lower in the S&P 500 could find support, uh, 2,491, and then south of that, 2,480. As I mentioned with the Dow Jones, the kind of it's also been a popular strategy by some traders uh, for to, to, to buy the dips uh, for these U.S. indices, seeing as they're going on to create multi well all-time highs. It's also encouraging to see how positive momentum is uh, is very much still still uh, ho holding up. So the buying momentum is strong, so you can be more confident that the upward move is going to last. Conversely, we've seen a sell-off in gold, uh, the, the positive run of in global equities in Europe and in the US uh, has led to a, a, a opposite move in the, in the gold market. Gold and silver have come under a bit of pressure, classic flight, flight to quality, safe haven plays. So since gold created a record high, uh, not, not actually that long ago, it was only the eighth, Friday the 8th of, of, um, of September, so it was only you know just 10 days ago. Created a 13-month high here. We have been in decline since. Notice how we see the price moving lower, and we see positive momentum fading, 
and then momentum actually swung to negative territory and positive negative momentum is actually increasing so we're not seeing any signs of this downward move coming to an end what we may what we may well see is we may well see a further decline before we potentially have fit into the resume the wider big picture trend so we could be looking to push down towards 1305 1300 big psychological number and then 1296 1296 is, is significant because it was the it was the kind of the top end of the range that uh, that gold was in it acted as resistance in, in june and also in, in april it, act, it was sort of the top end of the range while the, the commodity was kind of range bound for a number of months in the kind of first or second quarter of this year so we could potentially see a, a fur, we've already come we've already come back about 40 bucks from the uh from the september high we could potentially drop down towards 13 to 5 1300 or maybe even 1296 before we, we may or may not see uh see a resumption of the wider upward trend bearing in mind that gold has been in a broadly speaking a positive move um well since about december uh last year but particularly uh, uh particularly kind of more aggressive positive move since the uh, since the lows in july so we can easily potentially see a push higher um, in, in the kind of in the kind of medium term, and should that be the case, uh, bulls will then be looking towards the resistance here at 13.34, and then north of that, looking to the September high of 13.58, and then beyond that, 13.75, which which was the high of last year, and then if should we take out 13.75, the big psychological 1,400 dollars would then be uh, the next one on the radar. Silver, uh, similar looking chart whereby it's um, in a very kind of a positive move, upward trend since July. But we have seen a bit of a pullback in recent weeks. Similar situation here. It was Friday the 8th of, of, uh, of September. It was on to create a multi-month high, a level not seen since April this year. So, we, uh, But we have seen a bit of a pullback since then. As you can see here, the, the positive momentum started to dwindle. And then it actually turned around into negative momentum. And similar with gold. We haven't seen any signs uh, that this kind of uh, seeing as ne negative momentum is rising. We could potentially see a further decline in the silver market before we may see a resumption of the wider upward trend. So, in terms of the silver market, we could be put, we could uh, be, be targeting for kind of in the, in the shorter term. We could be, be targeting back towards this level here at 1750. South of that, 17 spot 224, and then below that the 200 day moving average at 17 spot 1-1. These are areas of potential support we, um, for silver. We, we may see a, continu a continuation of the negative move, uh, but you know, given that the, the wider trend has been to the upside, the over the kind of medium to longer term view on silver is still is still to the upside. So should we kind of push higher in, in the silver market, levels to watch out for to the upside will be 18 spot 0, zero. And then the September high of 18 spot 21, and then beyond that, the April high of 18 spot 65. Turning our attention now, sticking with the commodity scene, and turning our attention now over to the oil market. Also had quite a decent run recently. Uh, Brent high just stopped only last week, back in the last week, creating fresh multi month highs, levels not seen since April this year on Brent. Uh, the last cut, the last today has been a very, very you know, low volatility day. I obviously haven't seen much movement, but seeing as we only we created a multi-month high only a few trading days ago, the outlook is is still still positive for Brent. As you can see here, positive momentum is still very, very much uh, the, the name of the game. So we haven't seen signs of the buying momentum weaken. Uh, it, we, we just haven't really seen any any addition progress in the increase in the price. So initial kind of upside target. For Brent, it uh, is going to be the April high of $56.53. And then beyond that, we'll be looking towards a kind of psychological $57 a barrel. Uh, in recent weeks, uh, buying the pullback has been a popular strategy by some dealers. Uh, so, if we, so if we do see any kind of moves lower in the price of Brent, we could find support in around here, in this level here, at $55. And then south of that, we'll be looking potentially towards $54. And then $53.83. It's been a similar chart for WTI at West Texas Intermediate, but it just hasn't been as overtly bullish uh, that we, that, 
that, that, that we've witnessed on the Brent chart. Similar situation, two, uh, on Thursday we created a fresh multi-month high and we've kind of hung around that level since. If anything, uh, the WTI market has been a bit range-bound. You can't really make any decent headway beyond 12, sorry, I apologize, beyond $50.27 here. Uh, and, and it's sort of been propped up by the 200-day moving average, which comes into play at $49.42. So the bias is still to the upside. As you can see here, positive momentum is still very much in place. So levels to watch out for to the upside will be $51.00. And then, should we take off 51 bucks, uh, the next level to potentially watch out for will be the May high of $51.66. And then, if that level is exceeded, the April high will then be the, will then be the one for Bulls Focus at $53.56. Moves lower, may find support off, off from the 2 day moving average, which has been, um, as, as I just mentioned, at $49.40. So, after that, Back towards the kind of big figure, 49 itself, and then down towards $48. These are all levels you potentially see as a value support uh, should you see any moves lower in the price of WTI. Euro dollar is still strong, but you just haven't seen any additional gains uh, uh, in, the, in, in the currency pair. Uh, it really just hasn't, I found it difficult to kind of get beyond uh, kind of. To kind of to, to retake the, the kind of cycle, you know, the, the big psychological number of 120. So the chart is telling us that it's very much to the upside, but it is a bit concerning though that uh, momentum is still in in negative territory. So we see divergence between the two. It could be an indication that um, it could be an indication that the kind of whatever whatever positive moves that we do have may not last because you know because there isn't uh, much buying momentum around. To the upside, obviously, um, looking at WTI, obviously 120 is a big psychologically important number to keep an eye on. And then north of that, September high at 120.92. And then beyond that, we've been looking towards 122, should that be the case. As I mentioned, Mario Draghi, the, chief, the president of the European Central Bank, is speaking this week on Thursday. That's obviously, if you're, so if you're trading any euro crosses or any euros on indices, you need to be all over that. And keeping uh, keeping an eye out for what Mr. Draghi has to say. There's been a, there's been some um, the resurgence in the pound, and also uh, the resurgence in the pound has seen a bit of, a bit of money flow out, flow out of the euro. Broadly speaking, a commodity to euro starting in in the second. Uh, but should we see any push any moves lower in the euro versus the greenback, we could find support in around this area here at 119.16, and then south of that at 118.37. And then below that, should we move south of those uh, support, potential support regions, we could be looking to find support in at the 50-day moving average at 117.82. You are starting a scene, uh, I've seen quite the reversal. Uh, well, it's, it's pushing higher today, but you know it, it saw a, quite a large sell-off uh, last week. So take a look now at the, at the Euro starting chart here. Not too dissimilar to the FTSE that we saw a major sell-off on Friday and, and, a, and a bounce around today. And notice how, as the market was selling off and selling off, and then the rate at which the sell-off really started to ramp up, we can see here about how momentum swung from being ever so slightly on the positive side, barely in positive, and then all of a sudden a, a steady increase in negative momentum. So we haven't really kind of seen any you know any signs. Uh, that the kind of market, that the kind of momentum, pay, the negative momentum or the selling pressure is coming to an end. Granted, we have seen a bounce back today, but after several negative days in a row, and especially the rate of which uh, the ground that lost, it is fairly, it is, it's hardly surprising that we that we that we witnessed any uh, that we witnessed a bounce back in the in the uh, in the euro starting. So if if you continue the kind of the kind of the, the wider negative move in the euro versus the sterling levels to watch out for for the downside, we could see some support in at 87.38, uh, and then south of that at the 2 day moving average at 87.06. Moves higher in euro sterling may encounter resistance here at this level uh, at 89.08, uh, and then beyond that. The 50-day moving average at 90.36 may also potentially act 
as resistance to any kind of upward moves in the euro versus the, versus the British pound. Taking a look here at now at dollar yen. Uh, look at dollar yen. We have seen pushing higher in, in the in the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. As I mentioned, we do have a Bank of Japan update uh, on the early hours of Thursday morning. So, if you are trading the dollar yen, please be aware of the uh, of the update from the uh, bank, Central Bank of Japan. As we can see, after quite a severe uh, sell-off uh, from from July all the way to early September, we have been been, been pushing higher in the in the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Um, notice how it's actually taken out. Uh, it's taken out a couple of the of the of the, um, of the previous highs, which could suggest that we could see kind of a negating of the kind of the downward trend that has been in. So, this is a kind of classic downward trend, creating lower low, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs until we see a bit of a turnaround here. So, by taking out the high here from late August and then also then mid August and even even early August, could point to a suggestion that. We could see a further move higher in the dollar versus the yen and also notice how while the price of the dollar yen is pushing higher here we saw it was matched and as mimicked by the swing around in positive momentum and it's on the rise so the buying pressure that we're seeing for the dollar versus the yen for the time being hasn't really shown us any signs of it running out so levels to watch out for to the upside would be the 2 day moving average at 112 spot 26 and then if we go beyond that, uh, the next level to watch out for will be the will be the 113 region for the dollar versus the yen. But um, seeing as we have lost a lot of ground in the last few months, uh, if 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 they, if they get a wider downward trend since July it does resume, levels to watch out for for the downside on the dollar yen could be this level here at 110.67, and then south of that we we'll are looking to back towards this just shy of 109. In around this price here at 109.24 and then back down towards the 108 and 107.32 region that's if this wider trend continues but we've taken out a few highs and the and, and the momentum is still very much in, in the positive side so I, I suspect we could see more ground uh, being gained from the dollar versus the Japanese yen taking a look now um, at the at um, one last kind of quick glance, and uh, we've got the one minute left on the actual um, on the actual webinar itself. Uh, so, if you, so if you have no questions, I'll be wrapping the, the webinar up uh, in just one moment's time. Take a look at the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Big picture is telling us since May it's been a very strong and a powerful kind of upward trend. After spiking in early September, uh, it's, it has found it difficult to kind of to kind of retake those highs, but we are seeing a bit of a, a bit of a kind of a, 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 an attempt to retest those levels. The momentum indicator really isn't telling us anything. It's, it's kind of reflective of the price, not really moving in a clear and conc concise direction. But I suspect while we remain north of this level here, um, this support level here at seven at zero spot seven nine forty two, I suspect that the, the the overall positive sentiment is going to remain in place. So any kind of moves higher in the Aussie dollar. Um, may encounter resistance at 80.65 and then north of that we'd be looking towards the September high which comes into play at 81.25 should it move south of uh, this, this area here we, we may find support from the 50 day moving average at 0 spot 779.330 and then below that we be looking back towards uh, 0 spot 78.73 uh, so that, in terms of the markets we've covered, uh, we've, we've, we've covered the major markets. I'll just quickly remind you about future webinars that we have on. Um, in terms of webinars to, um, on the the page where you found this on our uh, under the learn section, webinars and events on the same page where you found this. We have webinar tonight um, at, at 7 p.m. London time, 1900, 1900 hours British summer time. Um, it is the Trader Development Program Part Three. Um, that that is tonight um, at 7 p.m. London time on when, on Monday, the 18th of September, 7 p.m. London time, 8 1900 British summer time. And looking ahead to Wednesday, we have a web, we have a webinar at 19:30 British summer time, so half 7 p.m. London time. Uh, the webinar is covering 
combining technical analysis with digital 100s. And that is on Wednesday, the 20th of September at 19, 1930, British Summer Time, 7.30 p.m. London Time. So feel free. And then obviously next Monday, I'll be back, I'll be back here live uh, at 12.15 for the, for, the weekly, uh, for, the, for the Monday weekly webinar. As I mentioned before, in terms of news analysis, uh, some of the articles that we, get, that we write on the news analysis throughout the day, myself and the analysts around the world, get posted to, to this section here. So regardless of what time zone you're in, it's all, you, you're, gonna, uh, you're going to be seeing analysts, regarding analysts update from around the world being, being posted here. Some of our, uh, some of our ana analysis gets posted to the news analysis section of the website. Other portions of it actually go directly onto the trading platform itself under Insight. And Insight can be found by clicking on the Market Pulse and the second option down is the Market Insight. So some of the, some of the, some of the, some of the analysis gets posted on the website, some gets posted on Insight, which is within the trading platform. What we also do here as well is we also do, we also have a chart forum. So we put up a, a bit snapshot of a chart and we write a few other characters about what we think the chart could potentially do. And the chart forum can also be found under Market Pulse. So it's the third option down on Market Pulse. And then lastly, I'll show you the economic calendar, our fourth, fourth option down on Market Pulse. It gives you a breakdown of the major economic events that are on the calendar for the, for the next few trading days. And also show you what the forecast is and what the previous month's reading was. So as I mentioned, we do have some, some, some important economic data coming out this week. And uh, obviously, if, if, you're, if you're trading the financial markets, it is a good idea to, to keep, out, keep an eye out for what economic news is coming out. Uh, I do want to thank you for your time. Uh, I, I appreciate you tune, tuning in and listening. Please sign up for, for future webinars. And I hope you have a good trading week. Thank you very much.